Folks, we have some brand new data from home builders showing that this housing crash in 2024 is even worse than the one that occurred in 2008. With Reuters reporting that US new home sales fall as the median price hits the lowest amount in more than two and a half years. This median price is down 7.6% from a year ago and is now down to 400,000, the lowest since June, 2021. And what's amazing about about these collapsing sale prices for home builders is how fast this downturn is occurring. Because it was only 16 months ago that home prices peaked and yet they are now down already by 20%. And you can see that this 20% decline in builder prices is unprecedented because in the last downturn from 08 to 2010, at this stage in the downturn, the prices were only down 10%. So the prices have gone down more than 2x in the same period from where they were in the last downturn. And you can see in the 2008 crash, it wasn't until 43 months after the peak that builder prices settled at a 22% crash. We're already at 19% only 16 months in. Now, I wanna be clear about something, everyone. This data doesn't mean that home prices are cheap or affordable. To the contrary, even with these price cuts, the prices that builders are charging are still very high in a lot of markets, particularly at 7% mortgage rates. In addition, the builder sale market only encompasses about 15% of the housing market as a whole. The remaining 85% of the market being occupied by existing or resale homes, where we can see on resale homes, the existing sale price was 385,000 in February of 2024, according to the National Association of Realtors, this price is only down 7% from peak. So the decline in prices on existing resale homes, which occupies 85% of the market, is much less than the 20% decline on brand new homes. And we can actually see we're getting to the point now where brand new houses are almost the same price as existing houses, with the premium being charged for new houses over existing homes only being 4%, one of the lowest levels on record. And ultimately, there's a host of different takeaways out there from this data for you as a home buyer, an investor, or someone just tracking the US housing market. And I think the most obvious takeaway is that this housing downturn is happening, folks. Like this is real. This is real data from the US Census Bureau on how much home builders are charging for their homes. And a 20% drop in only 16 months going from 497,000 to 400,000, that's a massive decline and suggests that we are in a housing downturn, a housing downturn that is accelerating and is likely to worsen over the next six to 12 months as even more inventory hits the market. Now, my other takeaway from this data is that the mainstream news, the mainstream financial and real estate news is completely almost ignoring this. Like I was shocked when I dug into this data, how big the declines were that builders were charging. I started scratching my head. I was like, how is this not more well known across the real estate industry? Because I see so many people, especially in the comment section to my videos, so many people try to say like, hey Nick, you're wrong about the housing crash. Like there is no housing downturn. And I realized that the reason that people say that is because they're misinformed. They actually don't know the data about what's going on in the housing market. And the, the reason that is, is it seems like there's some type of effort being made among, I don't know if it's the mainstream news sources, I don't know if it's among the government, I don't know if it's among you know the housing data people. There's some effort being made to hide what's actually going on. Because how is, new home prices crashing faster than 2008, not every headline for every news site. I mean, this is such relevant information. It needs to get out there. And ultimately my mission is to make sure you guys know all of this so you can make a more informed decision as a buyer or investor because what these builders are doing in terms of rapidly cutting the price and also offering really generous mortgage rates to buyers, it's telling you what has to happen in the housing market more broadly for demand to come back. That's what's really going on here, everyone. The builders, they're pretty objective. They're not emotional. They just wanna build houses and sell houses. So they're very quick to find what the market clearing price and market clearing mortgage rate is to sell these homes. And you can see as a result of these cuts and reductions, the builders have increased their home sales 
to 662,000 on an annualized basis, which is now kind of up from the bottom of sales in 2022, now back to actually like, you know, slightly below pre-pandemic levels, but let's call this a normal level of builder home sales is what we're seeing today significantly lower than the sales that occurred during the pandemic by about 35%. We're back to normal builder sales. And so I, so think about the housing market this way, everyone. If prices go down 20% on the resale market and mortgage rates drop to 5%, we should see sales go back to normal. That's what the builders are telling you. With the other key side to this puzzle with the builders and what it means for the housing market being the mortgage rates, that's the other key thing you need to focus on. Because not only have the builders cut the price by 19 to 20%, they have also cut mortgage rates by about two percentage points. Many builders are offering these homes now, not at the 7% market mortgage rate, but they're actually allowing you to buy the home at a 5% mortgage rate, a huge reduction in your monthly payment if you go from seven to 5%. Like take a look at this, everyone. This is what these builders are advertising right now. You know, Lennar is doing a three to one mortgage rate buy down program where they're offering 4.99% mortgage rate for the entire loan term. So that's already a 2% discount compared to the market mortgage rate. But not only that, they're giving a teaser mortgage rate of 1.99% in year one, 2.99% in year two, and then 3.99% in year three. So these builders are going to prospective buyers and advertising 1.99% mortgage rate in year one. And of course that's enticing buyers in. And then not only that, they're giving a huge discount on the mortgage rate throughout the whole term, getting it to 4.99% compared to seven. And ultimately this type of mortgage rate buy down is expensive. Lennar Mortgage, they'll pay for you. They'll pay for this buy down and it costs probably 30 to $40,000 to pay for this type of buy down, a cost which isn't included in the builder sale price figures I quoted you earlier. So think about that everyone. In nominal terms, the median sale price that builders are selling at is down 20%, but that doesn't include the value of the mortgage rate buy down. So if you were to include the value of the mortgage rate buy down, these builders have cut prices probably more than 25% on a net basis in many cases. Now you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, like how is this possible that the builders are cutting the price so much and still staying afloat. Because if you actually look at the builder financial performance, it's still pretty good and the stock prices for these builders are still really, really high. Like you can see Lennar's stock price is $166 a share. I mean, this is like surging. I mean, it's almost like kind of a bubble almost. You look at the builder's stock price, you say to yourself, how, how can it actually be this high? if the builders are cutting the prices as much. Same thing uh, for D.R. Horton, everyone. D.R. Horton's the biggest home builder in America. Their chart looks almost identical. You know, their stock price is $161 a share. It's f more than three times higher than it was before the pandemic. And so are the builder stocks in a bubble? Well, that's a really, really good question. One that I'm gonna answer later in this video. But first, I'm gonna show you some data on what's actually enabling these builders to offer these price reductions to buyers and still make money. Because if we go to Lennar's Q1 2024 earnings call transcript, their CEO said some very interesting things, particularly related to their building cycle time, which let's see if I can find where they talked about their building cycle time. Here we go. They said that their building cycle time decreased by seven days to 154 days on average. So it takes them 154 days to complete a house, which is less than six months. That's a 30% decrease year over year in cycle time meaning that they're building these houses much faster, which means they're building them cheaper. Additionally, their cost of construction fell 2% quarter over quarter and 11% year over year. Part of that is due to the fact that like building costs have gone down, lumber prices have gone down, although they're starting to trend back up a little bit. Potentially labor costs maybe are going down a bit. Maybe they're also building smaller homes. This is another trend that definitely seems to be happening in the market. The builders are recognizing that home buyers are stretched on their ability to afford payments and afford down payments. And so they're saying, hey, we're gonna dial back the size of the home that we built. Instead of building a 2,300 square foot home, maybe we build a 2,200 square foot home. Instead of building a 2,000 square foot home, maybe we build a 1,900 square foot home. You can see this is something the Washington Post reported on a couple weeks ago. They're saying less money, less house. How market forces are reshaping the American home. Major home builders are prioritizing narrower houses with fewer doors, windows, and cabinets with median new home sizes now at a 13 year low. So let's take a look at this, everyone. The builders are building smaller homes. We can see in 2023, the median square footage of a single family house under construction was 2,179 square feet, which was down about 
4% from what it was in 2022. So a 4% reduction in the size of a house, uh, indicating that some of that decline in sales price is due to smaller homes, about 4 or 5%. You can see this is part of a more long run trend since the mid 2000s, where uh, you know the builder houses peaked at around 2,500 a square foot. I wonder if this was because this was an environment back in the mid 2000s where the only people really buying new homes were luxury buyers. So the sizes of the homes went up. You can see now today they're back to really what they were in 2004, 2009, 2010. So actually kind of, they're down a bit, they're, but they're back more to like the long-term norm. There's also a definite demographic component here, folks, in favor of smaller houses with you know the aging of the baby boomer population in America. You have more and more baby boomer couples or single baby boomer widows living, um, not needing the big house that they lived in for a really, really long time and preferring a smaller home while at the same time, millennials are having fewer kids, so they don't need as big a house. But one thing I wanna encourage you guys to do is not let this narrative of smaller homes distract from the fact that new home prices are crashing. Like new home prices are crashing, that's not debatable based on the data from the US Census Bureau. And ultimately, I think we'll end up seeing the biggest declines in home prices in the states with the most home building. Because if we head to ReVenture app, we can see all the different states ranked by the number of building permits that are being pulled. We can see Texas by far has the most building permits for new homes and apartments, 220,000. This is a rate of building that's only gone down slightly over the last year as housing demand has dropped and inventory has increased, suggesting we're gonna see even more new homes built in 2024 and beyond in Texas. But really the metric you wanna look at if you wanna project the market in your state or county is not just the raw level of building permits, but the building permit percentage, which is an indication of how much relative home building there is in the area, calculated by dividing the number of building permits over the last 12 months by the local population. And you can see in terms of this building permit rate, we see uh, slightly different results with the biggest concentration of building occurring in the Southeast, like North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. This is real concentration of building in America as well as out in the Mountain West in Arizona and Idaho. And also be careful if you're in any of the counties in red because there's big differences uh, in how much home building there is by county. Like if we zoom in here on Texas, we can see like Dallas County only has a home building permit rate of 0.5%, but Collin County has a home building rate of 1.6%, three times higher. So there's three times as much building in Collin County as Dallas County. And I encourage you guys to head on ReVenture app and look at how this data compares for your area. Now folks, before signing off here, I wanna do a quick follow-up on my last video. My last video, I reported how Lennar, the second largest home builder, has cut prices substantially. And in that video, I talked about how I was almost in disbelief at how much the prices have dropped. So what I ended up doing is I emailed Lennar. I emailed the second biggest home builder in America. I was like, hey, here's the data I found. Can you like shed some light on why this is happening? And here was their response. I emailed their head of media relations and I said, hey, hope you've been well. I run a fairly substantial YouTube channel covering the housing market and preparing a video on Lennar and home builders, particularly related to price reductions. And I sent them this graph that I showed you guys. And I said, hey, can you let me know like how much of these reductions are coming from outright price reductions versus change in sale mix and size of homes? I said, particularly in Texas, because in Texas, the prices are way down. And they responded and said, hi, Nick, thank you for reaching out. I'd like to direct you to our recent earnings transcript, which can be found on the uh, investor relations page of Lennar.com. And so I went there and I found the earnings call transcript and I looked through for any mention of how much they've cut prices. And I, and I searched like average selling price. Nothing came up for average selling price. Just what about price in general? Okay, they talk about like attainable price point, price alterations, the right price, da da da. Okay, finally I found something specific. Uh, they gave some guidance about what their Q2 average sales price should be in the range of 420 to 425. But I found nothing in Lennar's earnings transcript that really covered how much they've cut the price and why they've cut the price. So I followed up with the contact from Lennar asking for more detail. I said, thank you. I reviewed the earnings transcript and found a mention of a home price forecast. However, I did not find specific discussion of how much prices have dropped to date, how those declines are distributed between outright price reductions and smaller home footprints. Would you be able to provide additional color on that or direct me to the right place to look? And uh, I sent that email five days ago and have received no response.
So if, if there's anyone from Lennar watching this video, please reach back out to me. I'd like to get more color and direction on you know why you've cut the prices so much and you know where those price cuts are coming from. Uh, so my viewers, who consist of hundreds of thousands of home buyers, can make a more informed decision in terms of buying or selling a house. Lastly, everyone, something that you all need to do right now is go to www.reventure.app and search your city and start doing research on the trends in home prices and inventory levels in your market. You can look at that data for free and knowing those two data points will immediately give you more clarity about what's going on in the market. But from there, I would encourage you to sign up as a premium member so you can see premium data points like the inventory surplus or deficit, how much inventory is increased over the long term. You can see my projections for how overvalued home prices are in your zip code. You can also track that data I talked about before relating to the home building permit percentage by county. This is a county specific data point as well as a metro and state specific data point. The areas with more home building permits are the ones that could face higher price declines. So go to www.reventure.app right now and educate yourself on what's going on in your housing market. Sign up and become a premium VIP member for $39 a month so you can gain access to all those exclusive data points.